in the marriage, I was very independent. So subconsciously, I start behaving like a widow and I'm married. Because what's see. even his role in your marriage? Yes. None. None. I mean, I have a husband, but here I am playing all the roles that my mom was playing. Yet her, she was widowed. I have a husband, but playing the roles, you know, Ooh. of that widowed woman. And in 2021, I left my marriage. So now you, mm -hmm. you've left? Yes. You've gotten a house? Yes. You expect him to pay for the rent? Yes. Upkeep? Mm -hmm. You continue looking like a queen? Yes. Out there? Yes. But your king is just here alone? Imagine. And but I you said, want the same, the standard? The that standard that I want. I could not even handle my children. We were in the same house with the children, but I would... I would tell the house girl to tell the children that I've gone to Mombasa. And they would tell the house girl, we want to talk to mommy. The, the, then the house help will tell them, but mommy is in Mombasa. Then they'll say, call her, call her, call her. So the house girl would take them out of the house and call you and call me because mm. they would hear my voice mm. if I'm in the house. Mm. For me to sit down later with my husband and tell him, I did A, B, C, D, and I am sorry. Oh. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a it lot. It takes everything. You know, to admit that I made a mistake. And even, not only him, even to sit his family down. Because remember, these are people who tried to reach me and I had blocked them. I'm glad that we get to have a second chance yes. in marriage. It's like we are newly married, by the way. Oh <laughs> I love that. So I'm happy for this second chance that God has given us. And I pray that we shall be light to many dying marriages and many people who are feeling stuck in their marriages. And I love you very much. <laughs>
anything without your help. So shukran. And now without further ado, please allow me to let this gorgeous woman introduce herself. Good morning. Good morning. Lea. How wow. are you? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't. Just wow. You know, What's I was wow? just listening to you flow and I'm like, what? Why? People can really flow. Kibarua. <laughs> <laughs> you really flow. Eight years of practice, you well, know. That, that was really How nice. How are you feeling? I'm very well. You look amazing. Thank you. You know, I bumped into you and a couple of girls in Garden <sighs> City. I gotta say hi to your girls. They were so wow. amazing. Yes. They made me blush, man. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I just mm. have like crazy social anxiety. Mm -hmm. So when I came to the table and I saw how you guys were just lively mm -hmm. and how you guys were just vibing mm -hmm. and seeing a group of women yes. sit together, yeah. that really made me happy so i just had to say hi to them before we start but oh, wow. thank you Karibu so much sana. actually before i introduce myself yes. let me just say you know the way sometimes you ask god open this door for me open this door for me and then god brings the door right in front of your eyes so since last year i've been saying you know one day i'll go to lynn's show oh. i have to go to lynn's show and share my story but then i didn't know the how you know so i went to another show and yes. then i asked a friend of mine Cele, yeah. celestine i yes. asked her for your pa's number she gave me and then we started engaging with your pa yeah and then um last week on tuesday we were with my charmer ladies mm. and you walked right in front of my eyes <laughs> and i'm like god i mean yeah. if i don't take this opportunity you know i mean when god brings it to you he he can't now also bring you to me and he's he's already put it there for in you know in you. front of you yes so i was telling my girls at the time i couldn't even concentrate on what they were saying and i'm like kylie is there i need to go i need to go talk to her and i saw you order your food and yes. i'm like i can do you and amaliza kukula <laughs> <laughs> yes. from the ordering to finishing you order you can put your juice mka maliza i can do you and amaliza kule imagine at the end then you on call call after call and I'm like guys sasa siezi enda akiongea na sibu I actually moved from where I was seated and then I sat now in a place where I could see you ndio ni kutime ukiweka simu chini hivi so immediately yes. you put your phone down now that's when I came to you and you're a very easy person ah you think so people <laughs> say that about you but I experienced it yeah, myself yeah. you are you are a, you are such a beautiful soul Aww. i mean it's not many people you would walk up to mm. and they would embrace you the way you did yeah. and i didn't even share much of my story with you i mean mm. we talked like for 3 minutes and you are like okay sawa let's do this you know yeah. and i'm like and anyway, when it's time it's time when Thank it's you. god's time it's god's time but you are so easy to relate to you, you know you you're just so easy and you've just mm -hmm. brought something that I always tell people mm. opportunities. Yes. Sometimes mm -hmm. and I even tell my team mm -hmm. stop looking far. You got to mm. look around yes. because sometimes the opportunity mm -hmm. is staring right in front exactly. of your eyes mm -hmm. and then for you not to grab it mm -hmm. because you want to be scared. Of yes. course you are going to be anxious. Of course. But I keep saying what could go wrong? You know I keep saying what's the worst? I mean me coming to you i was saying what's the worst that could happen yes. the worst is you telling me no or you telling me apana i'm having my you know my meeting or whatever so mm. i was like I'd, i'd say at least i tried that yes, i could be I you tried. Yes. Nice to finally have you Thank here. You. you have such warm persona Thank and you. I'm seeing your man here. I own a venue. Ako yes, that's <laughs> my girl. <laughs> Like when I do shows mm -hmm. and then I have people here mm -hmm. and their partners are sitting right there mm -hmm. vouching for them yeah. there is faith in humanity yes. makes me feel good mm -hmm. so we acknowledge you sir thank you for bringing her mm -hmm. but tell us mm -hmm. introduce yourself and tell us what you do wow so um my name is Lea Gadiki Anjoya you know ikoko ID but I prefer to call myself Gadiki Kiala Kiala is my husband yes and Gadigia is of course my native name why i love using it is because one day i do believe i'll be on a global stage mm -hmm. and when i'm on that stage and they are there battling how do we pronounce this name that it shall be known that this name comes from kenya and from africa Beautiful. so at the end of the day i'll make kenya proud that uh, apart from kenya being known as uh, it has good runners mm -hmm 
or good actors yes. or actresses. They're also good coaches mm -hmm. that come from Kenya. So I go by the name now Gavikia Kiala. Beautiful name. Yes, Beautiful. thank you. I am a wife yes. and a mother to two beautiful girls, um, seven and five. And uh, more to that, I run a business and I'm a transformation life coach. The, tr the life coaching came from a place of purpose once I now found myself. Yes. So that's that. just about me. Mm. Yeah. There's so much about you. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I honestly, mm -hmm. When I host the show, mm -hmm. I don't know how to get away from someone's eyes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel someone's eyes are just pushing, <laughs> you know, zinanivuta, uh -huh. yes. zinanivuta, mm -hmm. you know. But I appreciate you coming. This Thank is you. not an easy conversation to have. Yes, it's cause not. Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's other people yeah. and not us. And it's not us. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have this very victim mentality. Mm -hmm. Nilifanyua, nilifanyua, yes. nilifanyua. Yes. But we never say mm -hmm. nili, 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 yes. you know. Mm -hmm. And I found... It weird. I had a conversation with one of my best friends mm -hmm. in my personal channel, mm -hmm. and it was my moment to own up. Mm -hmm. I had snitched. I saw you saw it? <laughs> yes. It was none of my business. That was my business. <laughs> yes. I knew it was none of my business, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But for me, I thought it was such an easy thing to do because mm -hmm. I was owning up. Mm -hmm. I, I do that quite often. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll own up, someone will own up. Nataka mm -hmm. Tusonge, yes. like Tusonge. But mm -hmm. it's not easy. It's not easy. Because we stayed five years mm -hmm. apart. Yeah. And I could not even mm -hmm. own up. Mm -hmm. I know I'm the one who had her feelings. I know I shouldn't have mm -hmm. said something I wasn't supposed. But you're supposed. still trying to justify. Exactly, mm -hmm. you know. But you are like, ah, ah. Yeah. So sometimes mm -hmm. we have this victim mentality. Yes. You don't want to say it's your fault. Mm -hmm. But then the freedom mm -hmm. that comes after, with, after yes. owning it. It's so beautiful. You know, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The reunion. Yes. Like you would lose someone over just, just saying. Of, yeah. This wasn't you. Mm. This had everything to do with me. Mm -hmm. So your story mm -hmm. reminded me of that. Wow. Because to be honest, never have I ever sat so close with someone who mm -hmm. was like, Lynn, e, mm -hmm. no matter what we want to say, this was on me. Mm -hmm. But before I shut, I know they're like, Lynn, shut up. Before I do that, mm -hmm. why was this part important? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to let yourself out like that? Because I feel like, uh, bec later on I'll share, mm -hmm. but many people are losing themselves and being a victim yeah. and being stuck in situations that are no longer serving them. But then if you just, like you're saying, admit to what is, and being very truthful to yourself, but then it comes from a place of deep self-awareness, understanding that I as lean, I am like this, like this, and this. So I will own up to my mistake. So what I'm bringing out is the more self-aware people are, the better even solving problems will be. So I'm coming out because I really need people to be self-aware. It will avoid so many uh, conflicts, so many disagreements. Because if Lynn, today we are, we are disagreeing, even in the setting of a relationship, and you call me, let's say, Umbua, it will not affect me. Am I a dog? No. I'm not because I'm aware of the person that I am. So it doesn't matter what you tell me. And then also getting to a place of understanding. Okay, so if you tell me I'm a dog, I come back to myself and I ask myself, do I back like a dog? Could I have traits of a dog? Mm -hmm. You see, also getting to a place of deep introspection with yourself, analyzing whatever someone is telling you. Kuneza kwa naka ukweli. You know, na kama hakuna ukweli unasema, that person is either projecting their own insecurities on me. Na kama kuna ukweli, can I work on it? Yeah, so wow. that is the kind of awareness now I want to bring to people. Good. Yeah. I love that. It's mm -hmm. your time to take us through your story. Because okay. I know mm -hmm. the root, mm -hmm. it comes, it sprang it comes from, from somewhere. somewhere. True. So in, mm -hmm. in your most comfortable way, mm -hmm. could, could you please take us there? Mm -hmm. Maybe your childhood, mm -hmm. your marriage, mm -hmm. you walking out and coming back mm -hmm. and where we are right now. Okay, so I will just start from the beginning. Okay, sure. I am a second born in a family of three, three girls. And I mean, I was raised, I grew up in Mombasa with both parents. Mm -hmm. And my dad was an auditor working at KPA and my mom a primary school teacher. So life was 
normal, you know, just like any other family life. So when I was about um, around four years thereabout, you see, those, those ages, those days, school would end at lunchtime. So lunch would actually eat at home. Yeah. So now when we'd go home, we would see my dad bringing women in the house. As a child, you can't comprehend that bringing of women. And now looking back, it's women now my age, you know. And they would come, go to the bedroom. And we would ask him, Daddy, who is that? He would tell us, Ni auntie. And they would go stay and then come off. They go, you know. And one time, we raised it with our mom. Yes. And we told her, hey, there's, there are aunties who come, you know, another auntie, different aunties that come. And I remember my mom raised it up with my father yeah. and she got a beating. And that was that. I never saw any other, like from that time, I never saw any other woman or anything like that. So at about five and a half, I lost my dad. And I lost him to HIV and AIDS. Mm. And because of where we were, in the, the kind of job he was doing, there's a life that he had put us up. So we were living a good life. Yeah. So when he passed on, life changed like immediately from we were living um, at KPA houses. So we moved, we went now to a smaller house. Yeah. And so what, what I now looking back, I got from that is, you know, it's very important even when you're with a spouse to also build yourself because you don't want when you, you go or the spouse that is, most times is the men that, you know, hold a family. But even as a woman, you need to like have your own thing such that when this man, God forbid, is gone, that you will not change the life of the children. Because that also really affected us sub subconsciously. I didn't know until later in life. So now we are, we are there struggling with my mom. And I would say my mom, I don't know how she did it, but she she was an amazing woman she the way she handled us growing up and we never felt the lack of a father never or felt that we were like underprivileged or kujihurumia that never showed up uh, with my sisters and even myself i never felt like there was something missing in my family and yet we never now after my dad we never grew up with any father figure so my mom played multiple roles, the roles of a father, the roles of a mother, and we would see her really struggle. And the beauty about how my mom raised us is she would raise us from a conversation point of view. So sit down, let's talk, you know. She made, she was very strict, but very open. She would tell us, um, this month my salary is this, let's sit down, let's discuss. You want that dress? But salary and you're here to find a mini. So even me growing up, I grew up knowing conversation. We talk. If there's anything, let's talk about things, you know. So I, my childhood with my mom was lovely. And we didn't have much, but the little that we had, my mom taught us to be very contented. And another thing about my mom, she was very rooted in Christianity. Mm -hmm. She was born again. And so whenever we would want something, she would ask us, Ume, umeomba kwanza? Ask your heavenly father first mm -hmm. before coming to me. So mm -hmm. pray. Yes. And she would tell us, you don't have because you're not praying for it. You pray and then God will give me the money. Mm -hmm. So now we grew up knowing if we want something, we pray for it and yes. then God will give mom money and then mom will provide. So basically, my childhood now with my mom was okay. We went to boarding. Now we were in private school. My mom could no longer afford. Mm. So she took us to Kadonzweni. Oh, if you've heard yes. of it. Yes. Uko Ukambani. Oh my God, that school. Hey, you need trauma in Guinea. Okay. Like, it's fine. Uh. So we went to Kadonzweni, the three of us. Finished from uh, class eight. And then I was called to Kieni Girls High School okay. in Embu. Mm. And... Started off my high school very well. And then when I was in form two, my mom starts getting sick. 
So in and out of hospital, she would say today's chest pains, tomorrow's dream, back pain, the other day this. And she started eating healthy, you know, healthy, healthy things, you know. And like I said, we were very close with my mom. And she, she was the one who used like to make our eyebrows. And that time, because we would take her razor and want to do her eyebrows, she'd be like, no, 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 don't use my things. Go buy your own things, you know. Uh. So now when I got to form four, um, there was a time now uh, we closed school. Now third term, we were closing. Now we go sit for our exams. Mm -hmm. So we closed school. I went home and she was not okay. She was very sick. But she kept telling us, I'm okay, you know, the yeah. parents assure their children, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then now I go back to school, we are preparing for exams, and then I'm called to go home. So I go home, and the first time I go, my mom was in the ICU. She was in a coma. She could not speak, of course, but she could hear. So I was the end. It was such a dramatic or a very bad scene because they had shaved her hair and they had put all these machines on her head. To date, I don't see people in the ICU. I just can't. You know, it brings those memories of my mom. So now, after seeing her in hospital, I, I, was, I was now talking to her and I, I was telling her, Mom, you can't, you can't die you know, and she was a sign language teacher, so she would do this. So this means yes. So I would tell her mom, you know, you can't die, she, she's doing this, but I mean, she was hearing mm. what I'm saying. And I went to school knowing my mom will be fine. So I went to school and I didn't even last even two weeks. I was called one day. So I was doing, I was doing, um, German, German, ex German orals or German as a language in high school. And so this particular day we had exams. Now, you know, we'd start with the languages before now the main exams. So I was the first one to go in to do my German orals. So after, after I was done, I told my class teacher, can I call my mom? Because we, we were allowed, like we could call home. And I called. For the first time, my mom's, my mom's phone was off. It had never, since she bought her Nokia 3310, it had never gone off. Mm. But this particular day, it was off. I was like, hi, okay. I called my sister. My elder sister at this point, she was doing her first year in KU. So I called my sister, her phone is off. I called um, another sister of mine that She's not my real sister, but we've grown up mm. with. So I called her, her phone is off. And I'm like, no, there's something wrong. So I go back to class being very unsettled. And then later on, I was called by the principal. And we, I went to her office. Mm -hmm. And she just bluntly told me, your mother has died. Mm. That thing shattered me. I can't even put it to words how that felt. I felt like a million pieces of me had been broken. And I went to class and I'm wondering, you know, where am I going? I'm carrying books to go read, really, yes. you know? So my mom's best friend had come to pick me. So all the way from Embu to Mombasa, I was just thinking, thinking now how would life be without my mom? I mean, how... I've, I've grown up with this person, my confidant, Lynn. There's nothing we couldn't tell my mom. In fact, there was a time when I was in Form 2, I had like a boyfriend and I told him, sorry, I told him, I told my mom and, and she told me, it's fine, bring him home. And she was like, don't go uko inje and have siju dinners where lunch where bring him home i'll cook you people will sit outside i'll be in the house but bring him home mm. so we were that relational yes. and then she would meet the guy i'm salimie and then after we've had our meeting and gone she would tell me i uyo apana akiapana uyo apana uko short ka kupata mtoto na uyo mtu and then i'll be like ah ni sawa basi and she made relation if even the two boyfriends i used to have 
it it was so easy because yes. i would open up to her she would mm-hmm. advise me she would tell me you apana achana na oh, of course hakuna mwenye aliniambia nikae na yeye mm-hmm. wote alikuwa ananiambia tu niachane nawe but you see <laughs> The, her strategy worked yes, you know she yes. would just point out like a mistake and hey, and yeah, and that makes sense so now this time i'm going home all these things are flashing so who will i open up to i would tell my mom anything anything the first kiss anything i would tell her so how how do i go about life without this person i was i was really working hard in school to make her proud mm. So now she's not there what what are you telling me you know so i got home and i was just like a zombie you know people are singing you know those that bad mood mm-hmm. that is there mm-hmm. when there's a funeral and i was just like a ghost you know so i got home on a i left school on a friday on a thursday got to mombasa on friday we buried on saturday mm-hmm. sunday i was going back to school so i didn't have time to process Zero. the loss i totally had no time and then there i was home i didn't i as a person i don't like kuhurumiwa mm. cuz see i didn't grow up like that ile yes. pole I, I, i don't like it so i was trying to be strong to show people that i'm okay you know that don't worry about me my sisters were crying kai what for them it like my younger sister i would say she really processed, processed it my elder sister of course being the first born also was trying to compose mm-hmm. herself mm-hmm. for our sake mm-hmm. but i was also trying to be strong and i remember on her funeral i'm the one who spoke my sisters said mm-hmm. they, they they can't, can't. speak so after the funeral now people have gone it's evening we are home with my sisters only and then we look at each other we're like eh? so so what next and because of family issues that come in the After. setup of a marriage uh, the marriage my mom and my dad had my dad's side of they they didn't come for the funeral of course you know also later on i realized you know my dad had died way when we were very young so even my expectation you know, i had very high expectations mm. now mm. when i'll be talking of mm. the, the things i came to realize yes. so i, I I carried a lot of bitterness against people from my dad's side and I was like bono akukuje yo mazishi you know why were they not there for us like I carried a lot of bitterness towards them but they never showed up and now here we were and people from my mom said I wouldn't say they were that well off and you remember to me sisi tumefuatana do re mi so I was looking at it and thinking people were like ai hey, ni kazi watoto wamefuatana hiyo first born Second university born. second born form 4 third born form 3 yes that's a lot of responsibility mm-hmm. you know so evening came we were there by ourselves asking ourselves now what happens and so we were taken by the church because there was no one to take us and um we were just to carry our clothes now we went we moved in to our our church mm. there to live now with the pastor and mm. the pastor at that time had a children's home so that's where we went and i f- i finished now i went back to school yeah. finished my exams now after my exams of course went to now stay with the pastor and let me tell you lin you see there's a way i knew to live with my mom now i am with different people who have their way of living yes. so even that blending in remember for them they in the in the children's home i was the the, the oldest mm. the kids that they had then were below one year at 18 you know you're wild you want to discover things and being a second born i am those outgoing people i'd like to discover this do this so it brought a lot of teething problems you know it was just hard yes. for me mm-hmm. and also for them yeah. because they're also wondering so said this one why is she this you know them they are pastors you know there's a way they are me my, my mom yes she was born again but she was not a pastor so her she was very free she kept telling us you do what you want to mm-hmm. do but at the end of the day remember choices have consequences so if you go to that club if anything happens to you remember their consequences yes. so she 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 didn't raise up uh, she didn't raise us up with you must mm-hmm. do this you mu- no 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 she gave us free will so here i was in this children's home and 
life was difficult. And I kept telling myself, I need to move from Mombasa. I can't continue staying in Mombasa. Everything about Mombasa reminded me of my mom. Mm. I felt life was so unfair and I decided this will not be my life. So in that, you remember us guys then, when we finish high, uh, high school, we would have two years yeah. before joining yes, campus. campus. So in those two years, there was a time now, of course, since I was there, whenever there would be like someone who needed help, you know, I'd be called mm -hmm. upon, you know, go help this person, yeah. go help this person like that. So um, one time, I remember I went to a certain home <laughs> and while there, I remember it was like a rural setting. Growing up, I didn't, I've never, even we never used to go to Ushago. Mm. So now I'm, I'm in someone's home and my mom had taught us, when you go to someone's home, behave. Yes. Behave. So here I was in someone's home and I remember I was told to forgive, not, not kufieka mm. with a, not kufieka, to dig some yes. portion of, a, a small piece of land. I've never held a jembe all my life. Even in high school, I didn't do agriculture. So here I was, and I was asked to do that, that job. And I remember that time, it was the, the those days of Facebook. Mm. And I posted on Facebook, eh, and I wrote, far away from civilization. I remember that post because it costed me. That post costed me. Unfortunately or fortunately, one of the family, or one of the siblings of that home saw that post. She sent it immediately to her parents. Lea is calling our home uncivilized. <coughs> Where? I was just from that home that day. So I'm like, now where do I go? I've been just from this home. It was on a, I think on a Friday. So for me, when I was just, where do I know to go? Church. So I was just, I went to church. We had a youth seminar we mm. were preparing for. So mm. I went to church with my two clothes. So I have fear of going back to the pastor's house because, you know, I have been chased from... Civilization. From, <laughs> from this flat chest. <laughs> so what do I tell the pastor, yes. you know? And then there was already that perception around me that mm. there's a way I am, you know? There are things I can't do, Nikona Maringo. There was just those perceptions that people had against me. Yes. So I went to church and I was like, now what do I do? I felt like the world was very unfair. And I'm like, where, where, where do I go now? So where our church is, is not very, it, it was in town. Mm. So I got to church. I took my bags and started walking. I just walked and walked and walked. I got to Nyali Bridge. So when I'm there, I'm, I started contemplating, contemplating to jump. Mm. And ask myself, what's the worst that can happen? Who will even remember me? You know, people will cry. And the same way they've forgotten about my mom, it's they'll the still they'll forget, forget about, about me. me. So I was there. Content. And then, you know, that, that bridge is so busy. No one even cares what you are doing because people stand to admire yes. the water. So I was really thinking, and I'm like, hey, what if I jump and I don't die? You know, what if? Or, or, or I, I jump, that process of drowning, you know, the way it can be just mm. bad. Mm. So I was, as I was there contemplating, there's this Chokora who came. And for me, I keep saying, I think that was an angel sent that day. He stood there and he asked me, Oh, nafanya nini? Nikawambia, mm. minatika kuruka. Anambia, unaruka, unaruka, unaruka kwa nini? Nikawambia, mini kwa nashida tu nyingi. I just feel my life. And then I'm going to go my mom. So that Chokora is looking at me, wondering, you know, you're actually better off. I mean, look at how you're dressed, yeah. you know. And he told me, yeah, yeah, ata ndo anafaku anajirusha, siyo mimi. And I just started to cry. You I know? to you. Yes, I started to cry. And it was around five-ish, so we walked with him. There's like a place just under Nyali Bridge where Chokora's seat. So I went... I went and sat with him there and I started looking at them and I said, actually, imagine I have so much to live for. 
it has not it has not gotten here. At least yeah. I can call someone, you know. And at that point, um, I called my sister. This time she was in first year mm -hmm. campus. So I called her and I told her, Me, Nikwan Menda Kujirusha Nyali Bridge. She started crying. And then I'm it hasn't gotten to that. Don't do that. Nikwan Biata Nime Nime changed my mind because I found a chokora here who has helped me. Mm -hmm. So my sister called the youth pastor from, from church and he asked me to go back to church. Because he saw me leaving and he didn't know where I was going. Mm. So he told me to go back. So we went and sat down and we talked. But at that time, you know, I'm, I'm 18. What can the mind, a mind of an 18-year-old comprehend? It's just pain, confusion. I didn't understand myself, you know. And he was there trying to encourage me, you know, it's, it's going to be well. And I'm like, how will it be well? Will that being well bring my mother back, mm. you know? And he spoke to me, he spoke to me, and I decided, let me just go live with a friend of mine. There's a, there's a friend that we grew up with. So I went to their home. And I, start, I stayed there for quite a long time because I felt that people were really judging me. And I just needed to be in an environment where I felt a bit understood, mm -hmm. you know? And since this family, we've grown up with, they've seen, in fact, my mom, was teacher to her sisters. Yeah. So at least we had a relation. Mm -hmm. And while there, my results came out for Form 4. And I had gotten a B play Aww. of 60, was it two or three? Mm. And I was so happy for myself, you know. But then I remember someone asked me, so I your grade, nani atakusomesha university parallel? Because, you, you yeah. know, Jab was 64 points. Mm. So nanya nakusomesha university. But I said it's fine. And what I knew deep down is I knew I will go to campus. The how, I didn't know. But I knew I have to go to mm. campus. Mm. And I have to study, you know. So I, that time I was still in Mombasa. After that now I went and stayed with this other sister I'm telling you about that, you know. We grew up with I stayed at her place until now it was time to go and later on I went back to the mm. pastor's house mm. and now it was time for me to go to campus so the pastor was advising I look for a course in either Mombasa or Eldoret because that time Nairobi you know what were Mombasa we mm. have different perceptions mm. about Nairobi. Nairobi you know Nairobi is crazy Nairobi mm. this Nairobi that so at that time, I remember now when looking for a course, I specifically looked for a course that is not in either Mombasa or Eldoret. That is only in Nairobi. That is how I landed doing economics and statistics. Imagine, like I didn't want to be in Mombasa at all. And then my sister was in Nairobi. So at least I knew I had someone yes. and she was in KU. So I also applied for a course that was only offered in KU. Yeah. I didn't want any other campus. Yeah. So I applied for parallel and I was called. Mm. Of course I was called. Yes. And now here I am uh, joining campus. So school fees was 70 per sem. And in a year we had two semesters. So here I was now preparing to come to campus and in the first in the, the first semester, the church did a fundraising. And at least I got the money yeah. and I went to, mm. I came to Nairobi. They say Nairobi ni shamba la wanyama. Ni ukweli ni shamba la wanyama. You know, in Nairobi you make it or make it. Yeah, there is no <laughs> option. <laughs> you see, you make it or make you it. You make it or make yeah. it. You know, there's, there's no other option. Yes. So I came to Nairobi and I knew that after this semester that school fees has been paid yeah. by the church, mm. there will be another semester and another semester oh, that no, I no, have no. no one to pay for me. So I started to strategize. As a personality, Sijuni, second born Samani Nini, as a personality, I'm very goal oriented. And Mimi, I'm usually very focused. When I decide I will do this, I, I will do it. It's a second born behavior. It, I think it's a second it born <laughs> Yeah. So um, 
I come to university and I've already joined. Now I'm in KU doing economics and statistics. And now I'm wondering where do I get school mm -hmm. fees from? I'm new in Nairobi. I don't know even places. The only landmark I knew was uh, this green building. What is it called? Afia Center. Afia Center. Na archives. Siku adajuata archives. <laughs> so Afia Center was my, was yeah. my the compass. Compass. So Nikiwa Town, you know the way it's tall. <laughs> <laughs> Nikiwa town, Nikiwa Afia Center, yes. Nikosawa. Mm -hmm. So I would rotate, 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 Afia yes. Center, and yes. Nikosawa, uh -huh. you know. So, and I came with the mentality of, I have to finish campus. So when I was graduating high school, I got a contact yeah. for a certain lady, and I'll mention her name, because it's someone that I have really wanted to appreciate for years and I've never gotten the chance mm. to. And I thank God for this show Do it. because this, Yani, I really have to appreciate her. Feel free. So this lady, hey, I don't even know where to start. So I got her number yeah. when I was in campus. Remember I said the way I'm a yes. go-getter? Yeah. And now I'm in Nairobi. I don't have school fees. I call her. Hi, do you remember me? Yes. So you had gotten the number in high school? Yes. Uh -huh. She was the chief guest when we were graduating yes. high school. So she gave me her card. Yeah. Of course, I went and asked. It's the mm. same way I came to you. It's the same way I went to her. Good girl. So she gave me her card. Yeah. So like months, actually years, like two years later is when I'm calling her. And I'm like, I got your number during the graduation. Can you remember me? She said, yeah, yes, yes, I remember you. I told her I'm from Kieni Girls. She's like, ah, Kieni Girls. Yeah, I remember you. Then I told her, now I need school fees. She said, okay. Come, let's talk. So this lady, then she was the assistant minister of tourism. Wow. Her name is Honorable Cecily Barire. No way. And I, I wish for an opportunity to personally thank her because it's over so many years. I know she can't even remember, but she picked my call and I went and sat with her. And she told me, um, you don't come for my constituency, but what I can do for you, I can help you apply for help. And she gave her PA my details. I didn't even know how help is applied for. I didn't know where the forms are gotten from. I was so green. So the PA did everything for me. And there are some docu details I had to go back to Mombasa. So whenever I would get stuck, I would call her. And I'll tell her, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do this and this. She'll, she'll be like, let me call you in a minute. Then she would call the PA. The PA calls me and like, okay, I'm sending you one, two, three things. Do this and this. Like she guided me through the process of applying. And she made sure that I got the maximum amount that help gives. Which oh, is they give 60, to parallel people. Also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is 60,000. Wow. So for that, I've always felt indebted for her. Now she's the governor yeah. of Embo County. I've always felt indebted. So wow. Cecily, thank you so much. And hey, I know she can't remember, but she changed her life. Bless her soul. God, yani God truly bless her. Every time I see her, I'm like, that woman, she doesn't know what she did for me. And help gave me that continuously for four years. Wow until I finished campus. So in a semester of 70,000, so help would give per year, yes. but then mine would come all of it in the first semester, this, the 60,000, all of it in the first semester. So you see in, in the first semester, which was the mm. January semester, I only had a deficit of 10,000, which before me was little money. And then the other thing, another time I'm seated with a friend of mine, having just a discussion, and she tells me, by the way, th there's this guy I know of, he's called uh, Kilemi Mweria. Then he was the, I think, assistant minister for education. Mm. I noted his name down very fast, went to Google, where are his offices, showed up the following day in his office. And the, his PA asked me, do you have an appointment? I said, yes, I have an appointment. <laughs> Straight face. Straight face by the, the way I even showed up. He could he knew and yeah, this one has an appointment. Mm. So I said, Yeah, I'm here to I'm here to see Kilemi Mweria. 
luckily just by god's grace he was in and luckily i think he was just in a good wow. mood because he didn't ask questions who is that who is that who wants to see me and also i think the pa did not even run through his diary to see is there this person who really wanted to see you know this guy mm. so i went in the office and i the first thing i entered i told him i know i don't have an appointment but i need it's school fees just school i don't want anything else i just need school fees i'm in kenyatta university and i need school fees so he took his phone called the vc for k and i'm like kai ni mechoma akini mechoma ni mechoma mimi nitafukuzwa hiyo ku nimekuja kuaibisha university yes. you know and he called uh, now professor olive mugenda and he was like i'm with one of your students here and she wants school fees you people don't give school fees and i was like guy yeah. Kuisha mimi. Kuisha mimi. Nitasema nini? Uh-huh. And Professor Muganda told him tell her to come to my office tomorrow and I'm like, "Kai." That night I did not sleep stress. And I'm like, "Sasa nita nita nitasema nini?" Game over. Ndio hiyo mimi nimeenda nimeibisha university. This is such a senior guy. I was so scared. Nikajambia, "Ah, nikifukuzwa nitaenda university nyingine." <laughs> <laughs> I will look for another university that, you know. Uh-huh. Ah so at a, in the morning very early in kafika kwa ofisi yake I was just there at time in Ajabia kai kai. So she she came in and she said how are you? The way she you know she speaks very mm. calmly. And even the fact that I saw her face to face oh my goodness. <laughs> I was like I thought what na give VC you know you, you never come that close yes, to your vice yes. chancellor in a university mm. and she was like so you don't have school fees I'm like yes I don't have school fees she's like okay what what year are you first year first semester and she's like okay so the university will be giving you 30,000 every semester okay and I'm like wait hivyo tu like yeah 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 so every semester just be applying for those bursaries so KU gave me 30,000 a sem in form of bursary. Yes. So whenever I would apply every sem, yangu ilikuwa direct pass. Nilikuwa tuna apply because that's the only the way procedure. I could get the, that's mm-hmm. the process, mm-hmm. but direct approval. And let me tell you that 30,000 from 70,000 meant a lot for me. So for second semester, I had 40,000 to look for. Yes. 30,000 KU had taken care of and i began my journey in campus wow. so at least i am sorted nikona school fees first sem i'm only looking for 10000 second sem i'm only looking for 40 nak maisha ikaanza ku so in ku first year first sem remember i told you my personality yes. first year first sem i competed for miss ku hey watch ani kuambie hata si kwa top anything <laughs> uongo at a top gosh i was not top anything sasa alikuwa anashangaa kaka fresha si kwanza kaelewe streets za KU eh. kanaingia tu hivi kakiingia ku compete kirere eh. kirere <laughs> <laughs> but for me what i was targeting is i knew when i put myself out there it will give me opportunities opportunities only come when you go for them you can't sit and say me i'm sitting here i am praying i know they will come no they will come but you got to be you prepared have to be prepared you got to be prepared so when they come and you are not going for them yes no so i've always known i need to to be in that you know that expectation yes. waiting for opportunity i love that so my aim was not even to win because i knew sita win but my aim was, was the exposure to put myself out there so when i When I joined Miss KU and I failed horribly it exposed me because from then on I started getting jobs I would get like a uh, supermarket jobs easy za kusimama you know selling products and I would get my 500 a day my 1000 a day and that thing would make me so happy yeah and when people close for long holiday I never used to go home I would stay in Nairobi working My sister at this point was selling um, mabuyu mm. and jugu mm. to the tax shops. Yeah. And I told my sister Mimi I have an image. Kuuza mabuyu I will do other things. <laughs> But Mimi nitembee huku class na mabuyu. Haiwezekani. Tuko na shida lakini I, I will find another way. Yeah. Wewe 
that is your strength me ah ah kuna venye tu class watu wamenibeba siwezi show up na mabuyu already mimi miss something mimi nilikuwa miss kayo alafu nianze kwenda kutembea na mabuyu unataka jaribu sivyo you know, no, but you know it sounds it sounds cliche mm-hmm. but that's another thing let me point that out mm-hmm. you don't have to do what you don't want to do exactly you know mm. you, you actually don't have to you do don't have what's to. not in you yes. and you said maybe that's your strength mm. to me mm-hmm. it's not yes That's true actually. Mm. Nikaambia wewe ngangana tu na mabuyu zako. Mimi I'll do other things that I know will also bring money. So yeah. for me I would go do supermarkets. Ka image. Ka image wewe. You see our watu wanakuanga kwa barabara kwa yes. traffic na flyers. Yeah. I did that. And I was like who knows me in Nairobi? No one. So nikufanya you know at the end of the day was my mom taught us that always work with your hands. Do not there is no free money so don't allow free money never take free money work with your hands mm. so i knew there there'll always be a blessing yes. with working with my hands so i would do anything there was a time uh i would go to i went like twice that time nyayo estate so there is a lady i met in nyayo estate and she would tell me to wash her clothes and i would go and wash and get my mm. small pocket money and then funny thing is i never felt disadvantaged i never felt ati anapitia mashida i never felt even for a single day i knew this is what i have to do mm. and if it takes mimi kuosha nguo mimi kusimama kwa barabara mimi i will do it as long as i'm not stealing from bora anyone bora si mabuyu bora si mabuyu <laughs> that is where i drew the line yeah. you know so um now at least campus when, when i did that door started opening i started getting money and when i was in third year i joined tahidi high yes wow. imagine so sandu ina register najua pia ni wote sa hiyo ina register yes i joined tahidi high and now my life started at least kwenda juu kidogo you know yes and now with that exposure life started becoming better so in tahidi You know now you these people you're yes. meeting ni maseleb you know wale watu nimekuwa nikiona kwa tv nikiwa mm. pale Mombasa mm. so now i'm meeting these people pia mimi niko na hiyo kushtuka na waona and i'm actually on set with them and how i joined tahidi was very funny someone gave me number ya kwa moyo the yes. producer yeah. na kaniambia ukimpigia usijaribu kuditaja wewe jua tu vyo utasema but don't say where you got oh, yeah. my number from i hate those people who mention your Ati name nilipata number eh. kutoka you know mm. where so i called wamoyo and i told her hi my name is Leah. luckily she didn't ask me mm-hmm. come me I, I, i want to join tahidi she's like okay come let's talk and i realized i don't know i think it's just god's favor that whenever i would call people there would not be some resistance yes, you know na kuna ngana it was just sawa let's come we talk so i went went and explained myself to her nikamwambia mimi na na raise school fees there's nothing else you know i'm doing akasema sawa endo buy uniform come so i went and bought nikaenda pale gidurai nikatafuta two uniforms i showed up lead do i know how to act absolutely not sijui hakuna kitu najua but niko i will show up and i will do what i need to do See God I'm let opportunity imagine it learn your quirks I will learn uko mbele mbele Steve you know. Jobs says mm-hmm. they give you an opportunity never say no Yes you say a big yes mm-hmm. then learn on the job Exactly no. and then figure it out then just figure it out Yes but say a big yes <laughs> throw yourself in the deep end yes. and then do what learn exactly. yeah. figure it out figure to it out. And Yes So that's what I did ah. and nika join so nikiwa hapo Now I'm getting to know people on set. I'm meeting very nice people, very warm people. So I started as an extra. Ile unaona kama mkono ndio yako kamepita. Unaambia tu hiyo ni hizo ni vidole zangu. Unajua hizo vidole? Hizo ni vidole zangu. You know. Hamkuna, hamkuna. Tu ni good. Wito tu ni good itwangu, you know. Eh hasa laki iko na kazi. Wacha tu. So kidogo kidogo mm. nikaanza ku grow and one day nikaanza kuona la nimeanza sasa kuonekana kwa screen siongei but naonekana eh i'm like okay that's progress you know nikaanza kupewa sasa script yenye naonekana hivyo hivyo 
And then one day nikapewa script. Hey, nakambia guy. Ni, you know it came so unexpected so unexpectedly mm. that I, I was not I was not ready for that script. Mimi nilikuwa tu na show up ni najua tu ni extra twende. You know. Kono. Bora tu mimi niko kwa TV it's giving me exposure. <laughs> so this day <laughs> nimepewa script. Uh, uh-huh. Ah, niko na lines kadhaa. Wewe nikaenda na script yangu home. Kai na cram hazingi. Nasoma hazingi. Najiambia kwani watu ukram as in you actually read a script you know how do you read all these things and put it in your head you know so and then ilikuwa naona hata watu wanapewa script ya asubuhi mm-hmm. wakiambiwa action action in a flow na jambia hey jesus nitaifika hapa but then i was very bad at acting horrible very bad but still nilikuwa napewa script so i would really wonder Bona na pewa hizi scripts as in I would watch myself na jambia wa for <laughs> you need me. I'm like oh no this can't be me. But then I later realized there's a friend I met when I was there in on Interhidi High and it's someone also I'd like to appreciate. So her name is Masi Njoki. Yeah. On Instagram she goes by Izari. Izari. She's the friend I met there and Kumbe behind the scenes she would go tell Kina Abel this girl is looking for school fees akimwandikia any script wow. I never knew imagine wow. so you know cuz I would share a lot with her you know so and the day she told me I was like what why didn't you tell me wow. akanambia I knew if I tell you ungekata ungeanza kuji doubt when you do co act but i i see how you're struggling with school fees and i also want to thank abel because he really wrote those scripts for me na roho moja alijenga bana so at least from third year life became easy because now with the scripts i was getting the money was good yes. and it was sufficient to now pay off the balance of my school fees and at least because remember I'm paying rent I have food I have to dress I had built like literally I was my own parent I was parenting mm. myself at this time when I was in th- by the time I was getting to third year my sister got an opportunity my elder sister flew out of the country wow so now I'm in Nairobi alone so dikaendelea tu hivyo na tahidi getting to jobs here and there I graduated. Congratulations. Thank you. And that day when I was going for my graduation, I think that was the lowest moment of my four years in campus. Like I had experienced so many things in campus, but on my graduation day, that was my lowest. I left my cabed sitter in Kahawawendani, walked, no took a mat, got to KU went and graduated alone alone and when i was leaving the graduation square with my gown i saw the way people were being embraced by families wame valishwa mushai no wana kuwa celebrated hata mtukuniambia well done and i was like all this effort all this hustling god and i mean yes my sister congratulated me but she was far she was not there you know and I left that walk from graduation square till the gate was very traumatizing for me. I was really holding myself not to break down, but I was seeing people wame celebrate. Hata wengine wamepata huko mapass, but wame celebrate yao yote. And I I left. I could not even take a mat home. I just wanted to walk. So as a person how I reflect, I walk or I shower or I drive or I sit near a water body to reflect. So I just walked back from KU pole pole to mpaka Kahawa and I got to my bed sitter. Nikajifungia na nikalala and that was my graduation. And I was like was it even worth it? Nilisomea sasa ya nini? You know ikungangana yote. What was it for? you know in as much as i really wanted that certificate and a degree in economics and statistics i really wanted that but the fact that there was no one to tell me well done that really broke me so that time 
I had met my husband. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we met in... Okay. We went to the same primary school. Mm. But, nile mtu unaona. You know, we never had like a conversation or anything. I was in the same class with his brother. He was classes ahead of me. So now, in KU, I, when I came, mm. he was also in KU. Mm. So we started off a friendship. We became very good friends before we even started, you know, having mm -hmm. a relationship. Mm -hmm. So at this point where I'm going through all these things, I was also sharing with him. And now on my graduation day, yeah. um, by the time I was graduating, he had started working. So when I was graduating, he was out of the country. So I was telling him the way I feel, you know, no one has shown, of course, who was to show up, you know. <laughs> so when he came back, like, a week or was it two weeks later, when he came back, he did a small party for me Aww. with his parents Aww. and a few friends of the parents. At least now I felt. At least, you know, if I knew a graduation party, his was very big. So it had like 10 people, but at least he did something for me, which was... Mm. Yeah, really, beautiful. it was really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a friend to graduation, Kaka friend. Kaka friend. Ah, really? I was a, <laughs> I was a special friend. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Yeah, I was a special friend. Mm. So, so at this point, I finished um, campus. And yeah, like a few months, I got a job yeah. at a certain bank. And I started working and I worked for a few months. Then I resigned mm. from that job and then I got married. <laughs> uh, guys tell her we don't read. So, you just, so which part are you deciding to skip for us? <laughs> uh, to Rudy graduation, please. <laughs> Let's go back to graduation as a special friend. Mm -hmm. Special means you had seen him. <laughs> so it means said. you had seen him also in a special way. Yes. So okay. we we when I got to KU first year, yes. Ali ponyoka na fresha. Ona na vinato alikuwa na ponyoka na fresha. Ali ponyoka na fresha. Okay. Yes. Where was Sasa? Sasa mi. When you fresh? When you fresh? Ah, in your first year. Okay. So, but we we had he was a really close friend, mm. but even in the friendship, I just didn't know how to tell him the deep things I was going through, okay. you know? Because I was like, I saw certain bebaaji, isi mata, ona tuwi wakona mashida mingi. In as much as he would really want to help, he would, he would really be concerned. So I actually told him about the things I was doing, like the washing of clothes. Nikiwa nauko mathadia. And he was like, what? You went through all you that. You went all through all that. One thing I'd like to mention at this point is, you, you know, sometimes I speak to young people um, who are in campus and they tell me the way they are, they are facing a lot of challenges. There's a lot of um, peer pressure around um, lifestyle and people providing, people have sponsors or boyfriends mm -hmm. who are really providing for them. And what I tell them is, even those things were there at our t in our time. They were there. It's not like anything has changed. Mm -hmm. Even before us, the people even before, they were there. But then, what, what decisions yes. are you making? Because at the end of the day, you have a choice. You can't tell me, Ati, you know, sasa ni kona peer pressure, so ninaende umwanaume. No. You can actually do something. When you open your eyes, mm. opportunities mm -hmm. are there. Mm. But since you have fixated your mind on, it has to come through a man, through someone else giving you. You will always go for that solution. But when you decide that, you know what, yes. it will come from me. I'm going to find solutions for myself. Because personally, it's not like I did not get those those um what are they called those appro those, those approaches yes. you know so sometimes people just need to understand and especially young girls because i speak to so many young girls understanding that it is a season and sometimes what people fail in is creating an identity out of a season i love that 
you know something temporal you create an identity so you are going through a certain season like where it was lack of school fees and all that but you're creating an identity I love that. so i need a man to come and help me mm-hmm. because my identity is i am broke no it's very temporal powerful yeah i love that that's mm. oh god mm. you create an identity yes, out of a out season, of a season. Yeah. deeper guys right mm. i know i know yeah. i am chat kurudisha tu basi kwa bwana sasa kwa bwana ya so so what was it about him though because now you you've date you are dating mm-hmm. take us through the dating experience where you are like sasa to watch you friends sit wow. to eh sit to upgrade sasa to end the next Tunapendana. level okay so <laughs> i keep saying this and i know he will roast me after this okay but <laughs> what i loved liked about him mm is i saw potential okay because when we met in campus so not to go campus nini ni mtu wako nayo you know there is nothing much vision have, too but the vision that he had i saw a lot of potential in this person and as a person myself i am very i work with visions i work with goals and i like people who are sharp because i tend to think i'm also sharp you are sharp <laughs> so i think mm-hmm. many people everyone is sharp though. yeah yes so i i relate well with people mm-hmm. who are sharp and then also i don't know how to have um uh, friendships with people who are how will i call it without sounding rude but mediocrity i don't like mediocrity i i don't like it so when we were having conversations with him i saw the way he's intelligent yes nikone ya akili tunaweza enda mbali nayo good hana kitu but ako na akili yes akili we can work with it but now ukitafuta mtu hana akili my friends unaribu madendo you know akili is important yeah So, so nywele ilikuwa tu venye iko. Nywele ilikuwa tu. Hiyo hiyo wakati alikuwa amekaranga, alikuwa ameweka nini? Eh, alikuwa ameweka inaitwa nini? Le you missed the joke. Did <laughs> okay. I missed the joke? Yes. Akili ni nywele. Oh, wow. Kila mtu anasa. <laughs> wow. It's a hiyo joke yako ni deep. Yeah, see dio. Like when you deep me I like intelligence. Kabisa, <laughs> ni bona <laughs> wewe ya intelligence. Yes. <laughs> alikuwa ameikaranga alikuwa ameikaranga alikuwa beka those things yeah. came and all <laughs> and so it was oh fun before the akili i was attracted <laughs> najua lazima attraction ni <laughs> yeah uliona ka came niliona ka came kajambe he came tutaenda mbali nayo hebu ngoja ni muangalia alikuwa na came no way yes say a kai say a big apple Serious. Say I'm embrace natural here. Ndio kwa watoto so kuna kenya hizi show up kwa watoto atauza daddy what is this? Tuulizwa daddy. Okay go. Yeah so um we we I I saw potential yes. in him. And the way he was goal oriented. I mean even in campus he would do to, to be a shara hapa pale you know and I would see as in with where also I know I'm heading at least we are we are aligning in mm. a way mm-hmm. the way he's focused and the way i'm focused yes. when this when these two energies are brought together it's something compatible. beautiful will mm. come out of it mm. and then also we were very good friends okay. apart from you know the dating we were friends we would sit down and talk about things laugh about things yes. i would enjoy his company he would enjoy my company mm. or i would like to think he would, yeah. he would speak for himself yes <laughs> Yeah so those are the things I saw in him and also the main part is he's born again. So also the Christian values that I believed in mm. he also believed in. Mm-hmm. It's not like I am very spiritual yes. but the fact that their values for me that are very important were also the same values that are important for him. Mm. So you hit it off i said fine yes lord let's do this <laughs> and you did it and i did it <laughs> and um we were just friends and w- one day 
um, the way he proposed. Yes. Um, he told me that uh, I, I used to love going to the movies yeah. when I was in campus. Mm. So he told me that uh, there's this movie he wants us to go watch. And I said, fine. So on that day, I'm wondering, I Bona kuna a lot of disorganization ya yeah, movie. So we were to watch with an other friends of mm. ours. Mm -hmm. So he told me, no, you just go with the ladies. I'll catch up with you guys later. So we were a clique of friends. Yeah. So now the ladies and the the boyfriends, mm. then we were, they were just boyfriends. So eh, to kind of movies. Yeah. So, me tumefika kwa theater. Na shanga, bona wa mademo wana insist ni kae mbele. Na uliza, sasa hapo mbele. Mkaona, so screen, ajo hivi. Ukiona screen, no. Hey. Let's sit at the back. At least there is a better view. Yes. And they were really insisting. Apana, hata movie ndo ye meanza, nyamaza, nyamaza. Uh, ni kuambia basi tukae second mm -hmm. row. Hapa, hapa na po, it's two in front, bana. Tukaketi. So, so the movie begins. And I'm like, I hope I'm just letting I'm I'm just couldn't let up and watch is if it was sad, sad. Yes. I don't like sad movies. Mm -hmm. Just put something. I hope Nikki too enjoy. But I like when relax. Mm. So me, me, I knew it was like a preview before the movie. So Nikki, when we pick a story, now I'm here. It's a movie. Is this a sunny So my friend is like, she puts kids away. So I was really focusing on talking to her. She's like, where we're born a movie. So I'm like, wait, is a utina ka familia. So I now focus on the screen. Kumbe, it's this guy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this guy. And I find that he was screen, you know? So he's acted a whole, like, a, what are they called? Oh, this short, short docu-series. Yes. He's acted things. And then by the time now I'm focusing, Isha Pika Plus, Patia, will you marry me? Because nilikuwa too busy nikishtuka na njoo sasa huyu mtu alifika aje hapa. Why are you doing this? You know, I was so confused. And when he said now from the screen, will you marry me? Now the lights in the theater went on. Kulikuwa na watu wengine? Eh! Hey, hey, see there are people who had come to watch a movie. Hey, Waka kuwati. Maybe he made a whole, a whole ka episode I, for you. Imagine. Before the movie. Imagine. Hata watu wa move walikuwa na shangala. Ajo hiyo budget inakaji. Lakini halikuwa job, so it's fine. <laughs> the effort, we are the appreciating effort. the effort. Hey. He, hey. he made effort, uh. yeah. So the lights came on and I'm turning, people are clapping and I'm like, wait. It's a whole, like watu wa mekuja kuona movie like for real. And this guy, na mwona mekaba, kwa hapo mbele ya menil with roses there. Oh. And uh, was there on one knee, so I went there. Of course, I said yes. Yeah, and now we started planning for the wedding. Beautiful. Yeah. That's so beautiful. He's a very intentional person. Mm. Yes, he's very intentional. I love that. Yeah, so mm. here we were now starting to plan the wedding. Yeah. And uh, he's, he comes from a very together family. Oh. I come from scattered family. family in fact i knew my dad had sisters on my rurashio day for i never knew yes when we started negotiations for the wedding i never knew he had sisters i was very shocked you know mm. and so, but they have to come and receive the rurashio how was that like for you though? it was hard let me tell you Lee. it was so hard because i kept wondering these traditions, why are they one-sided in this sense? Now, I'm expected to bring dowry, Your dad's side. you know? But then, when my, ma when my dad passed on and my mom was struggling to raise us. No one was there. Yes, so why, why were you not there, you know? So where is the disconnect? Why is it? one-sided i don't know you know that that one has bothered me a minute mm -hmm. you know because you are supposed to go now look for your father's people yeah to receive the rurashio yes maybe i should bring someone on the show to explain to yeah. us father especially that part yes it can be very traumatic it was very heavy for me in fact i had refused i had said there is no way i'm going to face my uncles from my dad's side what am i going to tell them and but now 
my husband's father told me it's important let's just go for the sake of blessing mm. and i'm like me nishabarikiwa bana i mean why i don't understand those mm. blessings for me they were not making sense but i did it just for the sake of for just for the sake of it i can't even tell you why i did why? it but just for the sake of uh, doing it so i went and uh, because people from my dad and from my mom could not sit together in mm-hmm. one meeting so we did you know we went to my mom's side my my husband's family were legionnaire they went to my mom's side wakatoka huko na nyuki they went to my dad's side in nyeri then they had to go to mombasa to my pastor because all this like the pastor played a role in my life yeah. and then my mom and my dad side that's just for oh, is of for formality purposes and for blessings mm. yeah so the wedding came and yeah. we had such a beautiful wedding you loved it the wedding was like a well, what are they called this these things for rallies you mm. know mm. what to I forgot to mention my my husband's family the father is a bishop. Oh. So now you can imagine. Yes. It was a whole crusade. Mm. But it was a beautiful wedding. You had fun? I I enjoyed myself. You, you loved know. your gown? I did. Oh. It was it was just a beautiful mm-hmm. wedding and hey, to Kamaliza wedding, to Kenda honeymoon. It was just eh, it was just beautiful. And that, at that time I was not I remember I told you I'd left my job. Yeah. Yeah, and we started life, mm-hmm. you know. Mm. And um life was beautiful. Remember we are friends. So life was very bearable. So the first we got married in 2015. So 2016 we got pregnant with wow. our, first, first born. our first born and it was just a beautiful journey she got she she was born on that november of 2016 mm. and let me tell you getting a child hey, raising a child kimusiniogopeshe <laughs> uwe <laughs> mimi acheni kushindanga mkiniogopesha sasa <laughs> I think we, God gives women special grace. I don't think even men understand the grace the grace that women go through when carrying the child, pushing the child out or going for a CS and raising that child. Of course men play a role, yes. but I feel like the major role is on women mm. because you're the one to breastfeed you're the one to bap. You're both clueless, but somehow the man believes you, you know. Mm. they believe you we got a solution and my my first born when she was born she slept for the first time the whole the whole night when she was 9 months she had colic all those things you know hakuwa na lala so me for 9 months literally sikuwa na lala usiku i tried all these things people say juice what are they called juice sleep training all the, they were not working but and then she had we also suffered a lot of she had eczema so trying to find a solution to that eczema do you know that eczema actually cleared when she was 5 years so we dealt with it in fact her hand someone would think she got burnt mm. everyone would ask me what happened what happened here did she get burnt because it looked black mm. you know but interestingly enough when the eczema cleared by itself at 5 years her skin came back wow. very normal so it was tough <clears throat> raising her mm-hmm. and when she was when she had turned one i was expectant with the second child oh. and that one shocked me <laughs> it shocked mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. ah that one <sighs> i was like my god <laughs> jesus ask <laughs> all okay <laughs> I was yeah, like where yeah. Jesus mtoto wa pili by the it was so heavy on me 
where that one took time to process process that I'm actually expectant with the second child, you know. And I was like, Kai, huyu akizaliwa, akakatakuwa 1 year 9 months. Mm. Bado ni mtoto, mm. you know. Akajafika terrible tu. Imagine, so sasa nitakuwa na 2 na 2. Yes. Oh yeah. god. Hey. And this second child was born now in 2018. So at that time now the work that my husband was doing he was traveling a lot yes mm. so most times i would and then um i went back to work mm. i forgot to mention so i got another job so i went back to work so now he has traveled and he would be away for weeks you know so i'm here and and i say sometimes house girls are another family planning method because they can really frustrate you You wake up in the morning someone tells you nimeacha job nipe fear nipe fear nilipe hii mwezi eh so you you have to go to work uko na katoto ka 4 months na kingine ka 2 years mm. unaangalia watoto wenyewe pia wewe wanakushinda <laughs> no you are like now what do i do and by the grace of god because i truly say raising kids is not on our own strength it's just even the wisdom to raise mm. children yeah is just god given yeah we of course as parents make mistakes here and there mm-hmm. but it's god given and i we we raised the kids they grew up well and so I continued with my job also but also it got to a point I could not continue working. It became too much. Linda, yeah. There are days I would go to work with both kids because I need to show up at work and the house girl has left. What do I do? It's just going showing my boss and you're in your situation. I need to go home and figure it out. So also honestly my output at work was very bad. Siku ana perform you know akili umepata house girl mpi umemwacha but akili iko wapi iko home so in 2018 no 2019 i decided to leave work because it was just i couldn't continue and in 2018 i opened my first business that i have a business partner mm. so it's called baby shoe palace so that's the first business that we opened in 2018 so it ran so at least when i left work in 2019 i had a fallback mm. plan remember i said it's very important for women to have a fallback a plan. fallback fallback plan and their own thing mm. yeah so so 2019 i was doing my business and now fully with the children and uh, the business and the business started picking up very well then 2020 covid came and i think covid in as much as it came with sickness it came with very many things because now you are home all of you unaona muko nyote hapo there is no where you are going so you know this other time you you interact very minimal minimal mm. but during covid mnaangaliana hivi first of all kama you in biashara mna pesa yes. like for us who is buying kids shoes during covid no one so at least for him he he also does farming he does farming mm. so at least he was also doing his farming in as much as there was no any other business the farming kept us going mm-hmm. so now would be home all of us hapo ndo unaanza ku realize wa kuna tu vitu tu vitu hapa about this person that i didn't know about kuna tu traits tunaanza ku show up and it's because sasa mnakaa pamoja for longer and remember that time also i'm here figuring out my business mm. my children i'm figuring out so many things at the same time and 2020 towards the end of 2020 i started feeling i'm not okay and i could not tell why i i was just i had a lot of emotions yes that i could not explain lean someone would um kasirisha me just kidogo and i would get so emotional and later i would ask myself mbona nimekuwa hivyo emotional for what you know so so life for me became very unbearable in this sense i could not understand what was happening for me it to me i just felt i am very overwhelmed I felt I am very confused. 
I can't tell you what was confusing me. I was just feeling I am not okay. I started feeling the children are overwhelming me. Everything just seemed overwhelming. And in um, 2021, I remember I went to Mombasa to where now my mom was buried. She was buried in Mombasa. So I went to her grave. And I remember I sat there and I cried. And I'm like, what is this? I don't understand my life. I don't understand. In fact, that was the first thing I did when the borders were opened. And I was like, I, I don't understand. And then, funny thing, I'm an introvert, or would I call myself an ambivert. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to share things with people, with what I'm going through. I just don't know. I think now after my mom died, I just shut from opening up to mm -hmm. people. So I, I went and cried on her grave and I'm like, mom, I'm so confused. I don't understand what is happening to me. I know there's something wrong, but I don't know what it is. So in 2021, after I came back from Mombasa, of course, marriages have challenges. You know, there is no perfect human being and there's no perfect relationship. So we, we went through normal you know, what we would call normal challenges in marriage. And remember now, as we are going through these challenges, I also have this thing that I don't understand what is what it is. And in 2021, I left my marriage. September 16th, 2021. It's like a marriage date. I left my marriage. And let me tell you, Lynn, I cannot explain how that feels you know people think the person who leaves it's like they are better off but actually the person who leaves also goes through pain a lot of pain i i went into a very dark place in my life i've never experienced such darkness in my life like i experienced in that season so I remember I left on a Thursday. He was out of the country. So he, he, I, I had told him that I was going to leave. I don't know if he knew or he, he was like he knew that it's true I'm going to leave. But I waited till he left the country. Then I left. And I went to now another house. And while there, and I'm like, God. What is this? You know, I knew there's something wrong. Like I felt in me, I am not okay, you know. And uh, I started now life with the kids. So you took the kids? I took the kids. And then I blocked everyone. Even him? Yes. Everyone. Him, his parents, any person I know through him blocked Remember, I don't know how to speak out. So I blocked. So my way of handling things, cutting. Mm -hmm. Cut, I deal with it by myself. So I blocked everyone. And the, the mom would try to reach me with different numbers. I hear her voice, cut her block. She calls me with another number, cut her block. I just didn't want to have any conversation with anyone. So he came back from where he was and he started looking for us because I also didn't tell him where we, we had gone. Oh. So he would, he got another line that he remember had blocked his main line. So I looked for another number. He looked for another number and he blocked uh, and he now called. called me and I blocked it also. So one Sunday morning, I was driving looking for some medication and I bumped into him on the road. This is after how long? This was like the first month of okay. me leaving, okay. you know. So I bumped into him and I'm like, hey, this car looks familiar. When it comes close, I'm like, it's him, you know. So he blocked the road in a way that I could not pass. And he told me he had just brought some things for the kids. So he gave me, he left. Kumbe, the guy followed me, you know. 
So he followed me to now he knew where you live. We were living with the kids. So he said he he wanted to make sure at least the kids are okay and at least they are in a good environment, you know. And I told I told him that the kids are fine. So at that point he really tried to have conversations with me, but I didn't want I didn't lean unless someone has gone through it. There is a place you can enter that is very deep that you don't even understand what exactly is happening to you. I had lost myself. I didn't know who I was. I didn't understand what was happening. I in I was just like a zombie. Yeah. Like I I didn't even know what is happening, you know. So after that he tried to talk to me. I was like, no, I don't want. I just don't want to listen. So he left. And now I started figuring life with the children. So at that time, I used to be a church person very much. So I tried going to churches. So I would go to the, the church that we go together. So of course I couldn't go there anymore. So I started looking for a church to go to and looking for God, you know. Mm. And I would go from church to church to church looking for God. But then I got to a place and I realized maybe God God is not out there. God is here. And I got to a place also when you leave, when I was going to church, I would feel like people are judging me. These people don't know me, but it's interesting because that's that's how the mind tricks us. Yes. Your mind tell, exaggerates a situation mm -hmm. and it tells you, hi, everyone is seeing you as a failure now. You are a failure. So I would enter a church and I would feel everyone is judging me. This girl used to go to church. Now they are judging me. So I stopped going to church. And for the two years that I was separated, I never went to church. I completely stopped. So Sundays for me were for sleeping and, you know, rejuvenating. <laughs> so one thing I appreciate about my husband is every Sunday he would come pick the kids, take them to church. Every Sunday. And for the Sundays that he was out of the country, he would organize maybe with his auntie or one of his, of his brothers to come pick the kids, take them to church and then bring them back. So at that point, I decided to go for therapy. And I sat down with this therapist, a very nice lady. Her name is Chris from Kahawa Sukari Baptist Church. I sat with her. And as Grace is asking me questions, I, I don't even have answers for whatever is asking, she's asking me. She would ask me, who are you? I don't know. What do you like? I don't know. And so she started walking me the, the journey. But you see, I was in a place that I was not even receptive of that therapy. Because therapy, mm. just like, uh, what is it called? Mm. Going for rehab, yes. you have to be receptive. So the therapy didn't work for me. And for people who might think that therapy don't work is because you are not in that space to receive the therapy. Mm. So in that season, I remember I could not even handle my children. We were in the same house with the children, but I would, I would tell the house girl to tell the children that I've gone to Mombasa. So the kids used to not go mm. to Mombasa to see my sister, my younger sister. Mm. So, and the children, I'm in the bedroom, I'm listening to their conversation with the house girl in the sitting room. And they would tell the house girl, we want to talk to mommy. The, she, the, then the house help will tell them, but mommy is in Mombasa. And they'll say, call her, call her, call her. So the house girl would take them out of the house and call, you. And call me because mm. they would hear my voice mm. if I'm in the house. Mm. So another thing is I bought very dark curtains. I did not want to see light at all. And later on, I knew, I realized 
I was depressed and I didn't know I was depressed. I used to think depression is for people somewhere. You know, it's for a certain kind of people. How can I get depressed? But I was, in fact, there's, there's a therapist, a uh, clinical, someone I saw, and they said I was clinically depressed. And I bought very dark curtains. I didn't want light. I wanted my room to always look dark. I left my marriage in September. I switched off my phone in September. I switched it on in November. All that time, I was off. Remember, I have a business. Did I care? Absolutely not. I didn't care whether I lose clients. And that's, that's the thing oh. about depression. You really, you know, you can't even like take care of yourself. Mm. You don't even know the magnitude of what you're facing, you know. And now on the outside world, people also don't understand you. On the outside world, people think, ah, we are me to block, watch out to channel in But deep within me, I have a cry of, can someone fight for me and listen to me? So it also becomes a lesson to other people. When you notice someone in your circle, all of a sudden has secluded themselves. They don't want to talk, mm -hmm. even if they've blocked you try reaching out mm -hmm. because even they don't understand what they are going through. If someone would have told me I'm depressed, you're crazy. Me, I'm not depressed. So another thing, I used to feel heaviness on my chest. A heaviness that I... Nikama umekelewa, 50 bags of cement on your chest. Heaviness. I had panic attacks. I had anxiety attacks. And... I could not get into town. Town would give me panic attacks. Ninge drive, then I park, um, there's a place I park along my avenue. I step my foot out of the car. Nanza kusikia na run out of breath. So I would breathe <sighs> evil. And I, I'm, I'm unable, I'm unable to enter town. Mm. I just get in my car, I drive back home. I was unable to function for two months. So. I remember in that dark season, my house girl, who I'm truly appreciative for, one day she, cause I would tell her, when we pick a chakula, when it's ready, just knock on the door. I'll, I'll get the food. So she would knock, I'm not getting out of the bedroom for like two days, not eating, not drinking water, just in the bedroom. So one day she knocked and she told me, Mama Atali, you will die in that bedroom. And people will think it's me who has done something to you, you know. And she told me these things happen. You need to snap out of it. It happens. And she was like, Utakufa watoto utachia nani? So that is the day I opened my bedroom and had a conversation with her. She's not very talkative, wow. but... Sometimes it's your house help. Yes, but she called me out. Mm. Uh, they are uh, the ones who will call you out. That's true. And she told me, no, Mama Atali, you have to do better for your children. So now, now I started saying, you know what? You need to do something about this situation. You can't continue living like this, you know? And so being in that deep state of depression and anxiety and panic attacks. And I would ask myself, how will I get out of this situation? So that was my life in 2022, being a victim, where I would feel, kila mtu ananionea, like watu wa waoni, mindo nimetoka kwa marriage, like watu wa wanielewi, you know? And there's a way I expected people to show up for me. And that expectation, since it was not met, it even dropped me down more into depression. Mm -hmm. So 2022, I, at the end of 2022, I traveled with the children to where my sister stays in Japan. And being there now, you know, it was a different environment. I am not thinking about many things. Mm -hmm. I have someone sort of taking care of me. And that is where my shift started to happen. Because now I was in a different environment, 
the time difference is six hours. So by the time you are noticing something is happening in Kenya, mm -hmm. so it really helped me with now starting to work on my mindset, working on things like what is happening to my life, trying to understand what is this thing. So 2023, I decided, you know what? I need to work on myself. I need to work on myself. I can't continue living like this. I can't continue living in depression. I can't continue feeling that anxiety. I can't continue becoming, being a victim. I need to get out of this thing. I felt stuck. I can't move forward. I even truly thank God that I had a business partner in my business. So she kept the business running. If that I was alone in that business, it would have collapsed. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, even in the workspaces, you find someone is a high achiever at work. All of a sudden, I'm a non performer. So because the HR and the management are not understanding this person, the person is fired. But if only they would embrace and try to understand mm -hmm. what is happening mm -hmm. to this person, mm. then they would find a solution, you know. So I, I started reading because transformation cannot happen when you still stay in the same frame, frame of mind, doing the same things. For transformation to happen, you have to start doing things differently. So I started by reading books. And when I started reading books, and started just researching. I love knowledge, I love getting knowledge. I realized, wait, there's something here, there's something. So I called, I had a meeting with my uncle and I sat him down and I told him, I want you to tell me how my parents' marriage was. I need to understand it very well. And he explained to me and I took my mother's marriage certificate and I took mine and I was shocked because my dad I said was an auditor I married an auditor and my mom and I used to share birthday November 30th and so the year my dad died um, on the month of September and in that year my mom turned 32 I left my marriage in the month of September and in that year, I turned 32. I said, no, there is a pattern and this pattern needs to end with me. It can't, I will not pass the same pattern to my children. Mm. But then I wanted to understand then how are these patterns formed and how do they show up later in life? So I started now reading about um, the mind and also trauma. So I realized there are traumas I picked growing up. My dad, I mentioned, used to bring women in the house. So in my subconscious, what was stored is insecurity. So insecurity showed up in my marriage. I was very insecure. So everything that my husband did, nilikuwa naishuku. And I would wonder, where did this come from? It's not like he has given me a th a something to be insecure a about, reason. but I was just insecure. So when we are young, the, the things that our parents do, and this is also a lesson for, for us who are parents now, that probably you would break up with your spouse and you have someone else and you're bringing this someone else to your children. The, the memory of those children is being stored in their subconscious mind. And what the mind does, it works to repeat cycles. Unless you give the mind a different mm. cycle, it will repeat the same exact mm. cycle until you get to a point, you change the cycle and reprogram the mind. You create another cycle. So that was number one for me, insecurity. Number two, I saw my mom being very independent. So in the marriage, I was very independent. I mean, I would, I would tell my husband, we need to buy something. He tells me, no, let's budget. He's such a budget person. He'll tell me, budget, do this. Me and Enda buy. Say, have the money. I would go buy. So I brought the hyper independence in the marriage. I didn't have time for negotiation. At we discuss, what are we discussing? Mine was instant gratification. I want it now. And if you don't give me, give me now, I'll find out. We say, my mom, 
used to do it. Mm. So that thing was stored again where in my subconscious. So subconsciously, I start behaving like a widow and I'm married. Because what's sick. even his role in your marriage? Yes. None. None. I mean, I have a husband, but here I am playing all the roles that my mom was playing. Yet her, she was widowed. I have a husband, but playing the roles, you know, Ooh. of that widowed woman. So when I started realizing these traumas, and I'm like, I need to heal these things. So then I came back to how do I heal these things? Because I have noticed a pattern. My mom was a single mother out of death of my father. But then the pattern is repeating itself. Here I am becoming a single mother. And but your husband. And my husband is there. And I'm becoming a single mother. So why am I becoming a single mother? Because the, the subconscious programming of me is wired of a single mother. But then I have to reprogram that to, re to tell my mind now, you know what? No. I have a partner. I have a partner. And in this partnership, I'm not going to be hyper-independent. I'm going to show up the way I'm supposed to show up. And so when I realized these things, and at that time I remember, I'd started uh, before that, now I was very bitter with him. And I would be like, oh, Sujui, I ask you for money. You know that instant gratification you're not giving me. But then in the healing, I started realizing, wait, choices have consequences. I chose to leave the marriage. That means any consequence that comes with that decision, I need to bear it. Why should I expect someone to behave a certain way out of a decision I made? Come on, girl. You know? We're saying facts now. Yes. Hey. Why? So I left and I want you to still provide to for provide me as if I'm your wife. Yes. And to provide in the standard that I want. It doesn't oh, work like that. Not just provide. In the standard that I want. the standard that you want. No. He's a whole human being. He's not a child. So why would I want? So now you, mm -hmm. you've left. Yes. You've gotten a house. Yes. You expect him to pay for the rent. Yes. Upkeep. Mm -hmm. You continue looking like a queen. Yes. Out there. Yes. But your king is just here alone. Imagine. And but I you said, want the same, the standard. The that standard that I want. And I said, no, I need to be, I need to be comfortable with my consequences. And I need to own up my consequences. And at that time I stopped those things I was, do this, I stopped. If I tell him, if he does, good. If he doesn't do, fine, we continue. But that expectation, and I started saying, the only expectation I now have is towards myself. The only person I'm responsible for is me. And I started analyzing, what can I change? What is within my control? I work with the wounds, what I can, what I can't control, Leave it. I leave it because that is where also stress comes in. That is where depression comes in oh. because you you are you, you are not acceptant of your current situation. Yes. You are not accepting it. So there is dissonance between you and what is happening. There is a lot of dissonance. But acceptance is yes, I left, and with whatever comes with living, I take it up fully. You know, and even you see the way people, that's how people even become victims because you want, oh, unajua niliacho, unajua hafanyi, hafanyi, haf no, own up your living and own up the mistake you did and the consequences that come with those mistakes on the map. Why am I having a Cat Williams you know? moment? It's the year of truth <laughs> for it. It's the year of truth. Yes. We are not fabricating. And that even now goes into as a life coach, mm. as a transformation life coach. Why I'm passionate about transformation is because we want to cover. We want to like paint your, your transformation ikai vizuri. But transformation lean is hard. It is difficult because we do, um, when, I, when I'm doing my coaching, there are four aspects I use. And one of them is introspection. I tell you, we go to lean. Who is lean? You know, how is your background lean? So I guide you to understand how your background is. Yes. And we do an introspection of lean. So you say, I as Leah, I went through A, B, C, D. 
So these are the consequences of ABCD and I own them up. I guide people through self-awareness because sometimes, Lynn, you show up the way you show up, not because that is who you are. No, it's because what your environment has conditioned you yes. to be. Yes. So when I started doing my own self-awareness, I started realizing, by the way, as a person, I am good at this and this and this as me what are my strengths so when i sat down with myself i realized from a very young age i've always been out there speaking i've been speaking you know to people to as in i've always been a speaker for the longest time i've been even in campus i was doing a lot of motivational talks to high school to many places yet here i was god has given me a whole story but then i am dimming my light because I am fearful, yet God has to, taken me through pain for a purpose. So in that pain, I found my purpose. Wow. And this is now what I do. I am passionate about transformation because people are stuck lean. Yes. People are stuck and they don't want, they don't know how to unstuck themselves. But I will say the journey of transformation is painful because I, I lost the friends I had. I lost, I became uncomfortable for a season. I lost my marriage, but the transformation came. It was not easy. It was painful Lynn, for me to sit down later with my husband and tell him I did A, B, C, D, and I am sorry. Oh. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes everything. You know, to admit that I made a mistake. And even, not only him, even to sit his family down. Because remember, these are people who tried to reach me and I had blocked them. So even looking for his mother, sitting her down, looking for the father, sitting him down God. and telling them, I've realized I was like this because of this. And I am sorry. From now, I'm coming from a place of self-awareness. What is good for me? What is good for these children, you know? And now even the way I am showing up in the marriage is very different because, and if I may say this, healing is not now you've gotten to a place now at Nikosawa. No, it's the awareness you bring to a situation. One of the traumas I got was fear of abandonment where I would attach myself to people because since I lost my mom, I would fear if I'm your friend, I lose you. So what do I do? I people, please, I go over and above to, to make sure you're okay. At the, in that moment, So in the healing and in the bringing of awareness, I now, when you are my friend, I will take a step back. And I'll be like, that trauma is now showing up, Leah. Yes, relax, relax, relax. Don't, don't overdo it. The trauma is showing up. So everything is about awareness. Are you aware of your habits? Are you, are you aware in that moment that Iapana? And even the way I would speak to my husband, you know, I never saw how a, a woman should speak to a man. So I mean, you know? man. you know, see, we are friends. You know, I treat Cabra So, but then coming back to the marriage, I'm realizing, no, this God has ordained him as a man and there are roles of the man and there are roles of the woman. So, mimi nangangana kufanya roles za man, nitafanya za woman sangapi? I'm here providing hyper-independence, doing everything that a man is supposed to do. So at what point will I play my roles? And another thing, you see, most times we deal with outcomes like alcohol. People, unapata tum to alcohol deep in alcoholism. But you realize those are just outcomes. There is the deep-rooted issue. So you, you are condemning someone. Yes. Achana na pombe. But there is the root. So in coaching, I always want to deal with the root. Where did it begin from? Can we discuss that? E alcohol, ni outcome to, ni what we are seeing at the surface mm, level. Mm. Uh, let's go to the, to the root of the yes. issue. Let us find why are you going to alcohol? 
why are you finding alcohol as a place of comfort so let's first understand mm. what what happened in your childhood yes. and when you do that lineage you will find it all starts oui. when you are a child probably your father was an alco al alcoholic yes. or your mother was an alcoholic mm. remember what i said about the subconscious mind it stored that memory mm. and as you're growing up the subconscious wants to repeat the same pattern until you give it something new yes. to work with so now what i'm even doing with uh, at a corporate level i'm even engaging corporates and i'm telling them let's talk because we have high flyers in your workplace we have high achievers people who are excellent yeah. in their jobs but this person goes through an issue goes through loss for example loss of it could be a spouse a parent or a child this person comes trembling down they can't open up to to the, to the hr so the hr notices they don't come to work they're no longer motivated and they say ah this person let's fire them but if they can open up we deal with the root of that emotion yes they will go back to high achievers mm. so at a corporate level what i do is i guide people towards you go through the issue you are going through but you still maintain your high performance at work Good. you separate and i teach people detachment because the more we attach to situations the more i said we form identities mm around the situations mm. so we rotate around the situation and now depression oh depression is bad let me tell you depression is bad people underestimate what depression is and that's where people start getting suicidal thoughts in the coaching i i do i use four aspects self-awareness for transformation to happen self-awareness has to happen self-awareness not from what people tell you but from who you truly are and most people don't know who they truly mm. are number two introspection we go deep within yourself what who are you who is lean without the noises of the world without being on lnn without who um, are you who are you you know number three mindfulness and mindfulness is very key yes. because it's being very present the mind exaggerates situations but in this moment am i okay yes do i have food on my table yes sina rent yes lakini leo si niko na rent na niko kwa nyumba we are good Sawa. we are good we will deal with that because the mind wants we go to the future or we go to the past it doesn't want to stay in the present yet the future is a present moment to come yes and the past is a present moment that has gone by mm. yet we ignore the present moment yeah yet it is the most important moment so mindfulness being very mindful of this this moment right here i'm with you lin i will focus on this interview because i am here and I i'm going that. to be fully here someone is speaking to me about an issue as you're speaking to me i will not start saying like any say last year ki alifanya alifanya and yeah. that helps also couples because as like 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 me and my spouse we got back together But then and tunaweza kwa tu tukiongea na niambia kitu na jinia mimi si nile kitu alifanya last year I'm not present in the moment I'm already judging based on the past based on the past but I'm not present and the the last one is a paradigm shift and that is the biggest because paradigms are just beliefs that we have grown up with limiting beliefs come in there because wow. if you have limiting beliefs like let's say for for myself mm -hmm. example my company is called authentically you global when i started my introduction i said i know one day i'll be on a global stage that's why i called my company global now when you're there telling yourself like any way to nani atasha ipanda ndege you are there limiting yourself because of yes. the environment that you have grown mm -hmm, up with mm -hmm. but when you know yourself the self awareness you know your potential right now i may be here in kenya fine i'm appreciating i'm here but i know this is not my end result Beautiful. my end is global right Beautiful. now you are doing lnn mm. but this is not your end goal Anna. you are going global that is your end goal so paradigm shift is shifting mindsets and i love 
teaching on paradigm Love shift that. because you cannot make any transformation with the same mindset mm. you have to do a turnaround of your mindset Good. you have to sit down and ask yourself okay which which beliefs did i grow up with kwetu watu andeshange magari for example haya that is one belief you know kwetu eh watu anajenganga tu nyumba a certain place that is another belief then you decide as a person what do i truly believe in some t- some things you believe in are crazy to other mm-hmm. people they don't make sense to mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. as long as they make sense to you and you don't have to share it with people just write them down and then Good. after that what are you doing mm. towards achieving that goal and that is something i love to do which i call it now you create a self image of the person you want to become very clearly create a picture who do i want to become when i was healing and i became self aware now i created the picture of the person i wanted to become how does she walk how does she dress how does she talk how does she talk who are her sphere of influence where does she find herself anajipatanga places shady shady no there's a place i want to find myself in and those are the places mm. i go so when you start shifting your perspective according to the image you have created for yourself your life begins to change when i be- i did now my life coaching and i knew the path i wanted to take then things started to align without even forcing them. forcing things because now you have a clear vision mm. all of a sudden i'm seeing just doors opening i knew i would get an interview with you i didn't know when i just knew it's going to happen one day i didn't even know it's going to be this soon but see how alignment happens when you truly know who you are and your strength in my circles no one is doing coaching at my age not many people are doing coaching, coaching. you know but when i was doing self awareness i was very clear mm. it was very clear that this is the path for me and so i decided i am going for, mm. i'm going for it and i'm going for it full force i don't have to have a point of reference Ooh. i'm doing this because of god no because i am exactly because of t- no. t- i could be the first I one i am the point of reference for myself <clears throat> so I want I am the point of reference so other people now will use me yes. as the point of reference. I love that. So I am telling people that transformation is possible. You don't have to remain stuck. Some people have have gotten I have clients who tell me I've been stuck for 5 years. I don't know how to get out. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're going to work, you're doing this, you're having children, but you're stuck. And the most painful part is life is not stopping. It's not going to wait for you to be okay just because you're stuck. At because you're stuck, life moves on. So I love that. If you're willing and you're intentional, you have to transform and you can transform. I look at you. Mm. Look at you right now. Yes. In a global stage. Mm-hmm. This Amen. show is global. Don't play that. Amen. It's global. It's global. Like you can you yeah. can. Mm. What I've like my my take mm-hmm. home you can be your point of reference yes. what are you mm. waiting for what are you waiting for what are you waiting mm-hmm. for for me i keep saying mm-hmm. as long as there is motion mm. yes as long as there is motion mm. imagine you can do anything you can absolutely as long as you can get yourself from here mm. to here yes you can do it and you see it's unfortunately because people wait for a perfect now i want i want everything to be perfect in my life then i'll start there but no just start with what you have it's like when i tell people in business you're waiting for for me to get money i start business no you don't have the, in fact start the money will come on the show you say what's on your hand exactly what are you what, wanting what that are you, you can start with yes. you know beautiful mm. but allow me to ask mm-hmm. how was that first conversation with your husband mm-hmm. and during and this is maybe for a lot of people in separation because mm-hmm. when people separate mm-hmm. that's when you start bad mouthing your partner yes. hey, he used to be like <laughs> you know like you know <laughs> did, did you go through that phase mm-hmm. and also what mm-hmm. was that conversation like mm-hmm. and are there also areas in his life mm-hmm. that he has had to also mm-hmm. work on or mm-hmm. yeah kutupo okay so of course we are human beings mm-hmm. and of course people will throw words 
of course emotions are high i three words you know i really like talking about myself so yes. i three words he also three words because emotions are all over the place mm -hmm. but when we were coming back together yeah. interestingly enough he had also worked on himself the journey that i was going through he was also going through wow you know so by the time when i was sitting to have a discussion with him of course the the first meeting because i'm the one who called him for a meeting he was like ai apana ai mimi nilikuwa mi mimi nilikuwa nishajua story imeisha i mean 2 years we were separated for 2 years 2 months that's a long time you know life has moved on you know there are things in his life he had started that i was not even part of so he was like apana yeye alikuwa shajui story imeisha ni alikuwa ta anangoja tufike year 3 afanye divorce you know and i was like it's fine you know me coming to you i was not coming to you at turudiane i just wanted to tell you the space i'm in and i wanted to tell you that i have forgiven you as i have forgiven myself so it's fine as long as i have expressed i don't even expect a reaction out of you tukasema ni sawa so after a while we had another meeting we kept having several meetings so we had another meeting and he told me he he really feels that the, that the, the right thing to do is to get back to the marriage but he's unable to and i said it's fine you just take your time as in as in hakuna you know hakuna haraka it, it's just expressing mm -hmm. how i feel mm -hmm. you you're expressing how you feel there's no rush take your time and we continued having conversations we would do maybe dinners you know, and I, i what i loved is he was very honest with his process because i think men process things differently mm. unlike us yes. ladies yes. so for him he was do, he was on that process so we would, we had like like two months of conversation just it was not just pap sawa to rudi no mm. it was cause we hurt each other deeply so now there was also that space of um reconciliation that space of forgiveness and we also did when we were coming back together we also did uh, therapy you know because now we are coming back together we've stayed two years apart there's a way i was used to living mimi sikuwa napika chakula na lala venye nataka nilikuwa free you know so now i'm coming back to a marriage even him there's a way he was used to living as a bachelor yes. so now we are coming back together we have to put back our energies together so we had we had therapy sessions mm. several of them mm. but what made it easier for us is uh, both of us had worked on ourselves he also had his own um issues that he had shortcomings mm -hmm. like i said no one is perfect but i also like like uh, for people to speak for themselves yes but he had his own shortcomings so the beauty is he was also dealing with his own shortcomings so now when we are now coming together before we would be like oh many fanyi is like ah tapia wewe but now we are having conversation mm. you did a b c d and mm. you'll be like i'm sorry and i would look at him and wonder hey squeezy tunasemanga sorry wow. you know like it was a beautiful transition so now we are i would say in a good space because mm -hmm. like i said at the end of the day awareness is what is important challenges will come issues will come but are you aware of how you show up when challenges and conflict um, come? present themselves yes mm. so when conflict presents itself the way i used to be then before my new marriage mm. my former marriage the way i used to mm -hmm. be i used to shout and be angry na kasirika one week siongei that is how i used to show up but now from the realization i realized no even in the bible the way god describes mm -hmm. a virtuous woman mm -hmm. she doesn't raise her voice mimi uko yeye ana raise naenda haya ana raise naenda juu unaniambia nini wewe exactly unaniambia kana ni you know but i learned that no why are you raising your voice as a lady your voice the bible says are gentle and quiet you are gentle and quiet when you now when you embrace um, your femininity the person that you are you're not supposed to shout and you know what happens to shouting the masculine energy 
when you're shouting, the masculine energy thinks it's talking to a fellow masculine energy. So in a rise, yako in a rise. So in a jua, iwi ni masculine. So kaende. But when the masculine energy senses a feminine energy, it, it comes down. down. That's a fact. And that one I didn't know. Yes. But now, I realize that. And nowadays, ata yo energy ya kukasirika, they are used to get angry. Hakuna. Hakuna. You just talk it out. Remember, I used to say I never used to talk because I never knew how to talk. But now I learned, you know, you can actually talk things talk out. Talk things out. I love that. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the kids now, mm -hmm. why would you take the kids? Why would you? See, you are the one who wants to leave. Mm. Why are you taking the kids? So you leave the kids with their father. <laughs> Yes, that one was at punishment <laughs> also. At our toto, naenda now. Well, he says that one I punished him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you see. <laughs> but I think as our mother, yes. unonanga to uh, the children survive with you. Yes. You know, I uh -huh. survive. I don't know. We <laughs> see that yeah. children can only survive with their mothers, which is which not is true. wrong though. It's wrong mm. actually. It's very wrong. But now, if I keep telling him if I was to do things differently, like yeah. that time, if I was to do things differently, the only thing I would do differently is have conversation and also be sensitive that we have children. Yeah. Because children, like you see, the things I went through, I was a child. They showed up later in life. Yes. They won't show up then. Yes. So we be very sensitive not to bring children in the, in the messes that spouses are going yes. through. Usikue, wewe ndiyo unatuma mtoto, go, go tell your dad this, go tell your mom this, go do this. No. Let children appreciate the love of the father and mother. Mm. Let, the, let what they see is just love. Yeah. If you have your differences, it's fine. Put your differences on the side and just allow children mm. to be children. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm really thankful for is our children, of course, noticed the separation, of course. They noticed, especially our firstborn, because she was a bit, she was five. So she, she noticed. The younger one, not as much. And I really tried talking to her. And there is no day I ever told my children anything negative about their father. Never. I would say if there's anything negative, they, they will know they will see it for themselves, but it is never in my place. Yes. Also, I would say I would never stand in any place, even in the separation, to speak negative about him. I was also flawed. So I said um, our family knew the problems, but I will not stand and speak anything negative about this person. In because front of the children. In, in front of the children and even in front of people. Yes. Because at the end of the day, he is the father to these children. If I will not give him respect for anything, I will give him respect because he, he plays a role in the lives of these children. Mm. So because of that, I will accord him the respect he deserves. Beautiful. Yeah. You are such a wholesome person to talk to. <laughs> Thank Someone you. Someone can tell you've done the work mm. and it looks beautiful. Thank you. It looks beautiful Thank on you. you. Mm. And I hope many people mm -hmm. get to experience this yes. part mm -hmm. of it. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy. Mm. I've done a couple of work on myself. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy. Especially when you know you have to look yourself. Mm. <laughs> Mm. It's easy. It's very easy. You know, it's mm. very easy. But when it comes now to you, mm. knowing, yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta work on myself. Yes. I think that's the hardest that, part, oh, you know? that is the hardest part. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I wanna let you go. Mm -hmm. But before I do that, mm -hmm. feel free. Do you think we've left out anything that you would want to cover before we go? The only thing I'd like to add on yes. is, can we have conversation? Let's talk yeah. and I am open for conversation this is what I do I am passionate about transforming people's lives one thing I struggled with with even therapy apart from I was not in that space of therapy mm -hmm. is I felt that the therapist probably has not been in my shoes so probably they're not really feeling the pain yes. that I'm feeling yes. 
But having gone through the transformation myself, I know it is possible. I know as long as you're ready and willing, because again, you can't transform if you're not ready. But as long as you're ready and willing, I know anyone yes. can transform and it is possible. So let's have conversations. I am open. My um, the, the program I run is called Authentically You Global. Yeah. And my thing is, let's be authentic. Mm. Once you are authentic, you, there's nothing you can't achieve. You achieve anything with authenticity. Mm -hmm. And I love authentic people. I love being authentic because that is, when you're that eye, you go far. I mean, you, you become this beautiful version of yourself mm. that you did not even know A beautiful existed, flower. you know? Yeah, so let's How, how let's can have people connect though? So I am on Instagram. Yes. My page is called Authentically You Global. Yeah. I am, I also do coaching. Yes. So I, I, from when you visit my page, there is a link to the website okay. in case you want to book mm. an appointment for mm. coaching, in case you, you are like a HR mm. personnel mm. and you'd want me to come talk to your, to your staff yes. or to the managers, mm. because these are conversations that need to happen. Yes, it's good to talk about work, it's good to talk about business development, it's good to talk about targets, but also can we create wholesome people so that we attain those targets in our workplaces? In our workplaces. Let, let employers stop losing good employees, you know? So yeah, you can follow uh, my pages. My mm. number is also on the website. Yeah, you wanna give it out? Yes, yeah, so okay. you can reach me out on 0713-597-912. Yes. I love that. And I brought a gift for you, Lynn. No way. <laughs> ah, you guys, Munani is for you, Sana. Unajua nilifunzo na mama yangu. Ukienda kwa mutu, you don't go empty-handed. Uh, 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 Edwin, say hi to the camera, guys. Just, 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 no, no, come, make sure they see you. Come here, this, make sure they see you. Yeah, guys, this is Edwin, the producer. Yeah, yeah oh, okay, now we go. Hold on. Uh, scholar, come say hi. <laughs> Hold the gift to Nashia Pamoja, I was smart. Say hi. Hello. Abuga. Ah, kuna. Don't say hi. Because I, I want them to know, like, I, I get the gifts, like, Rada. <laughs> Dama, come, come say hi. This is Dama, also, our other producer. Okay, come say hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I was just like, uh, Muna, Muna, it's for Sana. That, that's my amazing. Those are the guys you don't get to see. Amazing team. Yes, thank you. Ulifundishwa na mom. Ulifundishwa na mom. Ukenda kwa nyumba ya mtu, you don't go empty handed. Yeah. So this is just a small Aww. gift from me to you. Yes, as we go global, let's go global together. Aww, I appreciate it. Yes. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. May God bless you. Amen. May He give you more. Amen. From where this came from. Amen. I'm gonna open it later. Love that you check. Muniti attacks man up. Love that you check. I love. I'm saying never, but I appreciate you. You are. Thank you, though. You honestly, are you are so wholesome to talk mm, to God. This work looks good on you. Thank I want you. it. If I want it for myself, this mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Imagine <laughs> how I want it for everyone. Mm. It's actually the year of truth. Yes, it is. What could go wrong? No, absolutely. If we faced our flaws, mm. if we said sorry, and we owned up, and we owned up, mm. if we wanted better for ourselves, yes. if we had big dreams, mm. global dreams for ourselves, they are what could so go wrong? Achievable. So achievable. Yes, they are not you know? far fetched. You imagine, know? and if they are possible to one person, yes, it's possible. I mean. What is so different, Lynn, from the person who is on a global stage and me? What is different? I appreciate you. Thank you. But since Hubby is here, mm -hmm. I know I gotta let you go. Mm -hmm. But since he's here and he's facing the camera, <laughs> he's facing directly the camera, mm -hmm. what do you want to tell him? Wow. Eh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. This has been a journey. Yes. It has been a journey and it has been a beautiful journey and if God had shown me that I would have gone through all this to get to my purpose I would have said Akino watch a twikai 
but I am glad the, the, the process was very painful, but I am so happy and glad to where God has brought us and for the purpose that he has birthed in me and in us and in our marriage. And I'm glad that we get to have a second chance yes. in marriage. It's like we are newly married, by the way. Oh God. <laughs> I love that. So I'm happy for this second chance that God has given us. And I pray that we shall be light to many dying marriages and many people who are feeling stuck in their marriages. And I love you very much. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. and thank you for supporting me. He really supports what I do and the coachings that I do. So thank you for your yes. support. It really means a lot. You'd have you usually usually have a busy schedule, mm. but the fact that he's not even answering his calls, it's a right miracle. Now, yes. It's a miracle. Two yeah. hours, two hours and a half later. So thank you so much. Yeah. It really means a lot. Yeah. And I appreciate you. Good. I didn't have a gift for you, but you are yeah, the gift. I am the gift. You are the gift, <laughs> Mama. You are the gift, you know. <laughs> you are the gift. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Leah. Thank you so much. So uh, again, you are so amazing to talk to. Thank you. You've also really spoken to me mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. I've said enough times, sometimes mm -hmm. it, the guests they do it for me. Sometimes mm -hmm. people think, Oh, I'm the strongest, I'm the one mm -hmm. with the show. But you guys, you are the strongest. You, you leave me here more nourished, you mm -hmm. leave me here more inspired, mm -hmm. you leave me here more lively. Mm -hmm wanting to push each day. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you for thank that you. and thank you. Two things, mm -hmm. I was reminded by one of our fans in the email, my mm -hmm. people said, would you mentor one of them? I'm a fan? Yeah, no, uh -huh. the people watching, would you care to mentor one? Yes. You would mentor one? Yes. Okay, good. You know, go to her website, guys. Mm -hmm. All the details are in, there. In fact, Lynn, yes. I have a masterclass mm -hmm. coming up in April. Beautiful. And because of you, yes, you will have to choose five people. Me now. Yes, from the people who will watch. Yes, that will come free for that masterclass. Okay, ni on any kind of my people. I want five. you guys to help me yeah. choose on the comment section. Mm. So you guys help me. Mm -hmm. Let whoever want to be mentored comment on the comment mm -hmm. section, and you guys help me choose by either replying to their comments mm -hmm. or voting for them, mm -hmm. and then leave me your email or mm -hmm. write me an email saying you've mm -hmm. commented mm -hmm. and what names you used on the comment yes. section. Because sometimes YouTube will will delete our comments with emails because they take that as spamming. So avoid leaving your email behind on the comment, but do send me an email saying mm -hmm. you comment and uh, and take a screenshot of mm -hmm. your comments so I know how to find them. Okay. Last one. Mm -hmm. Who would you love to see sitting on that couch next? So you talk to your husband. To figure out a bonge la interview. Where? Your camera shines. Who would you love to see sitting on that next? Wow, 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 wow. Who would I love yes. to see? See. Helen on that couch. Was this a Medenzel? No. Okay. There's a woman I admire. Yeah. I admire you a lot. Yes. And there's another woman I hey, that's one. Mm. And that is Caroline Mutoko. Ah, oh, I love she knows I love her. <laughs> she caro many chenga. One day she's she's gonna sit here when time is that her. one? She's amazing. She's God, she hates she's being amazing. called Caro, Caroline Motuko. Yes. No, I she's I, she's I don't amazing. even she's a, not like I'm fan galling right now, mm -hmm. but it's Caroline Motuko. For I, me? Yeah. That would be her. I love her aura. You yes. know, there's an aura that she has. Yes. There's a way she has put herself out as there. a brand. Like she's a whole brand by herself. Mm. 
and even with other people coming up she has remained Caroline Motoko. Caroline Motoko. So I, I really admire her. I will. Mm -hmm. I love her. She mm -hmm. knows I love her. Powerhouse. Mm -hmm. She's know? a powerhouse. She's a powerhouse mm -hmm. and I'm glad we've had mm -hmm. such people setting mm -hmm. you know the path yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. We don't struggle mm -hmm. much to be honest. Yes. And the reason sometimes we don't struggle mm -hmm. much even as women in the industry it's because People like her, mm -hmm. I, I love her. Mm -hmm. I love the late Catherine Kasavuli. Mm -hmm. I love Sophie Kenya. Mm -hmm. Those women, they really honestly, I love Tyrion Chebet. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, if I start naming them. I love, I don't know where she is, but mm -hmm. Belinda Ubu. I mm -hmm. love Julie Gishuru. Seasoned. Seasoned. Yeah. I love, you know, they, they mm -hmm. honestly yeah. did the hard work so yes. that we so could that find it. We come so when when that day mm -hmm. is right, I honestly say I leave it to God. Mm -hmm. When that day is right, mm -hmm. the interview is gonna happen, yes, and it will serve its purpose. It will. Yeah, mm -hmm. letting you go right now. Thank, Thank you. you for inspiring us. Thank you I for have so many take homes from you, mm -hmm. and I hope we can sit down in a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm creating a couple of live shows, so mm -hmm. I hope when I hit you up, please mm -hmm. come be on the panel discussion. Mm -hmm. You can be able to absolutely to, to be there so that we can continue mm. without asking twice yes. i will show up i appreciate that yes you're happy you went back to your marriage absolutely yes beautiful. ah yes 100 percent. yes mm. it's a good place to it be is. In. it's a beautiful place mm. to be in you yeah. know mm -hmm. ah nimuache okay bye guys <laughs> I hope you guys have learned something. As always on the comment section, leave me your take home. And if you want to connect with my guest today, her details are on the screen right now. Remember, if you would love that masterclass, transformation is, guys, we need, by the way, it's the year of truth. Meaning December 2024, we are sitting here and we are doing different stories. And December, God willing, will just be the month of testimonial. So hit me up on the comment section. What else? What else? Yeah, to thank our partners at Kings Developers Limited for always coming through. This job, I love this job, honestly, but I also get to work with incredible partners. So if you're looking into owning an apartment, hit them up, guys. I've spoken about Kings enough. Very ISO certified. I said I would never vouch for a brand that I know might give you guys trouble later on. So go check out the beautiful apartments they have. They have varieties and the price ranges, but they also have very flexible payment plans. So don't fear approaching them. You can also go physically to their offices at Prism Towers. Speak to my people there, Sheila, Mois, Wangari. Just tell them Lynn sent you and they will be able to take good care of you. And also if you have a concern, something that you can't even say on the comment section regarding any of our partners, I'm always ready to listen to you guys. Info at lnn.digital that's where you can be able to find us and submit your rebuilding stories. We have our WhatsApp number it's pinned on the comment section submit your guys we are doing rebuilding and restoration so if you have one along that theme here is the number and also thank you for supporting our work. We appreciate it may God bless you. I'm gonna see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Off to the next shoot. So to Ananeli. Bye-bye.